My sticky shoes. <laughs> Hello everybody, how's it going? So, it's been a while and yes, guess what? I've got a stinking cold, what a surprise. But welcome to Shorehaven. It's a quaint seaside city that's loosely based on Brighton and Hove here in the UK, which is steeped in so much Victorian history. Now the main focus of this mini series is going to be the Grand Pier. And whilst that pier will have been modernized over the years, the pier itself won't have changed much. So it's the perfect opportunity for us to crack open the vintage pack. So let's crack open the realism. Let's get our TMTK ready for a summer mini series, building a quintessential British pier. Let's go. Gather around everybody because it is history time. So for those of you that don't know, Brighton and Hove is a city on the south coast of the UK. It's very famous for being a Victorian seaside resort. They were originally two towns, but they were merged together to create a single urban area sometime in the late 90s. And it became a city in 2001 thanks to something called the Millennium City Status Competition. Lots of politics surrounding the unification of these two uh, settlements, of course. But we are where we are and we're here. We're in Shorehaven. We're in Planet Coaster and we're unashamedly ripping off Brighton and Hove. Now, unlike Fundy Fun Spot and Disneyland, we're not going for jank and cheap with this one. Brighton and Hove is a very affluent area. There's lots of money there. It's very built up. It's very commercial. And the seafront is beautiful. Very, very, very historic. And so, of course, you've going to start here with a massive big wheel that's going to go into Lookout to Sea, right? So that's what I put in here. Uh, let's just imagine for a moment that we're not looking out at hills and trees and stuff. We are actually looking out at sea. And in Brighton and Hove, you look out to the Grampian Wind Farm. Um, and it's actually quite a sight to see. Some people love it. Some people hate it. But, you know, it's quite a sight to see. And this is what this wheel would be doing in real life, right? You're giving you the views of, of all of the seafront. Uh, so what I've done is I've kitted this out with lots of stuff, you know, like sunshades and the official queue, etc. I haven't put a ticket office in yet. And I think I probably should. Uh, but for now, it's kitted out as much as I want it. It, uh, as much as I want it to be and then I've also started to get a feel for the seafront itself so we're going to have one central road that's going down here uh, with all of the buildings and everything looking out to sea by the way you will be forgiven for spotting buildings that you've seen before yes I did use them in Fundy Fun Spot yes I did use them in Disneyland and I'm using them here as well why bother building new ones if you've got existing ones on file right <laughs> so this is pretty typical of what you'd see along the seafront and lots of lighting and stuff going on here I will be kitting out the uh, complete city front by by the way, uh, but I'm not going to do that in this episode. That's not what we're here to do. We're here to talk about this, the pier. So Brighton itself did have two piers, uh, Grand Central Palace uh, or Grand Palace Pier, depending on who you talk to as to what you call it. And then uh, another one that's further down the shore. Now, unfortunately, that one burnt down, but we're going to talk about that shortly. So what I've started to do here is just kit out how I want this to be. Kind of figured if we're ripping off Brighton and Hove, we might as well just go all out and rip off the pier as well, right? So I started to put all the pathing and stuff down in this area just so I can get a feel for how I want this to be how I want uh, people to come in. There's going to be shops here, shops here, uh, and I think there's going to be uh, some kind of a grand entrance here. So this is what it looks like from a picture on a recce that I did to Brighton and Hove. So you can see the similarities that we're going to be going for, this idea of uh, this central plaza, uh, oh, sorry, central uh, entrance area and stuff. And then uh, as you guys love the realism that I do in the series, what I've done here is I've started to kit out how the pier would actually be put together underneath. Uh, this is going to create some absolute nightmares when it comes to doing supports for coasters and stuff. But hey, we'll cross that bridge when it comes to it. <laughs> bridge, get it? It's over water. See what I did there? Okay, whatever. <laughs> So uh, it's quite difficult to tell actually how the main Brighton pier, uh, the Palace pier, is uh, actually pulled together because I again as part of the recce I did this picture uh, and I did sort of like I was looking at how the the central st struts and the trusses and everything were working and then I came to do this here so I I'm hoping this is going to show on YouTube it's it's probably not because this is quite a mess right uh, but you've got every now and again you've got these support columns going down here and then you've got this truss that goes right along the top that's the, the bracing for the entirety of the pier and then uh, I thought well how does this work because it's it's rectangular and it's square it's, it's not going to be completely completely uh, secure so I thought well, I need to do some research into how piers put together. And thankfully for us, the remains of the old pier gives us some clues as to how they are put together. So here's an image of that. 
And you can have a look on this one and see that you've got these triangular like braces. So as we already know, in the world of engineering, triangles are the strongest shape to use. Well, actually, hexagons are, but you put triangles together and you create a hexagon, right? Uh, so what you've got then uh, is this idea of using triangles as a, a cross bracing, as well as the um, vertical and horizontals as the central bracing. And what you've then got is this ridiculously strong structure uh, as a result. So what you then can do is put stuff on the top and all of the weight and everything is then distributed along the, along the diagonals and then down into the ground through the bracings. So that's kind of what I'm going for here. This is the kind of size that I'm going for. Uh, so I want to have some kind of uh, entrance area and then something in the middle like a game stall or some kind of uh, arcade or whatever then i'm going to want to put some kind of food unit and whatever and then of course at the end you've got all of the rides going on so what i've done here is i've got two different types of trussing going on this first one was my original design this one here uh, but it takes up so so many pieces like it's a ridiculous number of pieces and i was like i can't justify using all of this just on the just on the bracing but i've kept this here so i've got an outline of the pier itself uh, but i think this is a rough idea of where it's going to be but actually i think it's probably going to end up extending a little bit further out but this is just a uh, this is just an idea of where we're going for uh, right now so if we have a look from this angle this is how we're going to be uh, looking out to the pier so i'm happy with how this structure is i'm happy with how this is going to go let me do some work on the entrance and i'll see you in a minute all right all right i know it's officially called brighton palace pier i get it stop hitting me up in the comments i'm not very well i have a day off <laughs> But here we go. This is the entrance of the pier. And I did warn you that we were going to be ripping off Brighton Palace Pier. And this is pretty much what it looks like. But I didn't think I was going to be able to get the angles of the shops and everything right in Planet Coaster. Because it's quite difficult to do the pathing and stuff. But actually, this has turned out so much better than I thought it was going to do. And these little domes have just turned out awesome. Like, normally, my domes are always in eights. So I do it as an octagon. But I've managed to do it as a hexagon instead. So I managed to do six. And you do it in exactly the same way, by the way. So you just draw out how you want your original shape to be. And then you fill it in uh, with flat shapes and stuff and then you copy it across so you've got a complete opposite and then all you do is you just move it around six times rather than eight times and it just works absolutely perfectly and then you just copy it around and you've just got these beautiful beautiful domes this is exactly by the way what would happen at brighton palace pier uh the domes and everything are carbon copies of, of each other and they just sort of like accentuate and accent the frontage so yeah i like how this has turned out of course it still needs detailing it still needs a lot of the theme makers toolkits and stuff but essentially what we've got here is just a load of like beach beachfront shops and tat and stuff that you could buy so you've got donuts and coffee and uh, all sorts of stuff, you know, whatever. So brightly coloured, uh, as I said, I need to put like bunting and, and stuff all along here and theme makers toolkit menus and, and all of that sort of stuff. But I like how this is, uh, I like how this is, is turning out. And then the actual ticket area, well, it's not really a ticket area because it's free to enter, right? So you don't need tickets, you don't need turnstiles, you don't need anything like that. It's just gates. So what I've done here is I've just used some of the uh, Cedar Fair... Uh, half gates that are on the theme makers toolkit workshop um, just to create the actual gates themselves but all they'll do is they just pull these closed whenever the pier is closed so you don't have tickets as I said and turnstiles and stuff it's you just open the gates and off you go let let people go in and on the inside here what I've done is I've just put these pillars and these beams uh, and then I've put in the uh, the projector screens along here just with some repeating images just to give a bit of background and a bit of texture to it because it was all wood like as you can see here this bit here it was all wood but it just looked a bit bland it didn't look very adventure like or it didn't look very fun so i just put in the images and it actually makes it come to life now what i'll do is i'll put some uh, letters and stuff on here to make it look like it's it's decent and whatever uh then i've never used this lettering before oh no that's a lie i've used it on the eat it restaurants but i've never had a chance to properly use the vintage letters and now we do look sure haven grand pier uh, <laughs> and the bunting i don't often use bunting either so this is like really starting to open up some of the pieces that i really have never ever ever used uh, and the vintage pillars and the the light pillars you know the light arches and stuff it looks it looks amazing and look if we change it to night time this is there we go ah oh, 
Yes, look, you've just got all of the strip lights and the fairy lights and stuff just outlining all of the, the important bits of the pier. I love it. It's just, I'm so chuffed. So chuffed with how this is uh, how this has turned out. Uh, let me just take the menu off again. There you go. Uh, so, flags around here. So, the flags are a big point of Brighton Palace Pier. Uh, it contains all of the flags from the EU. Uh, obviously, we're not going to do that in this park. What I am going to do, though, is have a flag for every member that's uh, on the channel so if you are a member uh, and you have an image that you want me to use please let me know what image to use and i will put a flag up for you but for now let's just the uh, nurchacho ones and of course by the way if you want a flag then you can join as a member and as long as you're a member by the time we get to the end of the series you'll have a flag that's pretty simple right uh, <laughs> and then the other side here we've just got some more shops and stuff and again we've got the domes uh, now these by the way would just be storage areas uh, nowadays but back in the day they would be like shops and entertainment bits you might have like tarot readers and stuff in here uh, they would they would utilize it but now in modern times you would have like shops and stuff what i've started to do here is put all of the brickwork for the flooring down, uh, so that's now all uh, there. Just and it's so I can hide, as you know, I can hide all of this unsightly stuff with the pathing. Uh, it just gives it one long plaza look. Well, you know what I'm doing by now, right? You, you guys have been with me for for long enough, so uh, yeah, you know you know what I'm doing. And then as we enter inside here, this uh, bit here where I've got a wall, uh, obviously it's a sea defence. It's to stop the sea from actually coming into uh, into land and whatever. But this would also be some kind of a backstage area. I'm not going to kit these out. I'm not going to bother, uh, but yeah, this would be a backstage area. This is where you'd have storage for all your shops and your games and, and everything. You would make the most of every single piece of space that you have here because you don't have the luxury of backstage areas. You don't have the luxury of massive yards or anything like that. You just have to literally put shelving wherever you've got space. So like this bit here, for example, would probably be some kind of storage. And then, of course, as you enter, you get your first... Uh, you get your first shop that we've got in here. So I need to put barriers and stuff in to stop them from, from walking through here. Um, and of course I need to hide all of the tiling and stuff. But this is your first food unit. So I've kitted it out with all of the Theme Makers Toolkit stuff that you would expect to have in here. Uh, it would sell an, a variety of stuff, right? It would be all sorts of fried stuff. Like churros or pancakes or fries or whatever. Whatever it may be. You'd sell all sorts in here. So, But it wouldn't be decorated and kitted out right it would just literally be a shack it wouldn't have any care taken to it for decorating the interiors and stuff it is just a case of opening it up selling stuff to people as they as they walk past there's no real uh, there's no real design element to it so that's why it looks a little bit shoddy because it's supposed to uh, that's that's its design and then all along here we have the uh, view the sea view stuff with all of the benches and stuff walking along here so again brighton palace pier has this with bins and stuff all along here so i need to just put out some more theme makers talk it stuff and you know um signs and swing signs and, and all of that sort of stuff uh, but yeah oh hello <laughs> Oh, it's not a tree, but we've had the first one of the series. Uh, it's fine. Carry on. No one noticed. Yeah, so I've put all of these benches all along here so you look, so you can look out and see. Uh, and I've kit to kitted this out and decorated with a bit more like detail stuff. So these are just fences. And then, of course, you've just got some lining along here. I didn't want to continue the fairy strip lights, uh, the fairy lights along here. I just wanted to have the uh, beams and stuff on the uh, on the roof. So uh, just to make it make sense. And then up here, we've got another kiosk that's sitting in the middle. So I wanted this one to actually be usable by guests as opposed to the one at the front. Uh, so, yeah, I just wanted to put ice cream on there and uh, milkshakes on the other side. I think it's the right way around. No, other way around. Ice cream this side, milkshakes the other. Uh, and then, of course, you'd have your benches and whatever all along here too. Now, what I do need to do uh, is just put in some more stuff along the outside here uh, and, of course, kit out all of the theme makers toolkit and stuff on the very front. A uh, bit more bunting, a bit more bring it, to, bring it to life. But this is as far as we're going to go in this episode. We're not going to go any, any further just yet, so we're going to do the entrance area up to this point. So, I'll see you in a minute. Oh yeah guys, I'd completely forgotten what it was like to watch a build come to life as you start adding in all of those fine details. I mean, Theme Makers Toolkit just brings everything to life. We know that from all of the past. But look, Shorehaven Grand Pier is officially open. It's colourful. It's alive. It's vibrant. It feels like Brighton Pier, but that's exactly what it's supposed to be. It's just 
so 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 good i'm so chuffed with how this is how this has turned out so let's show you around um so down here it's just lots of color lots of posters lots of vibrancy going on it's the idea is you're supposed to try and monetize as much as you possibly can from the front of the pier to try and grab people that aren't going to go onto the pier as they walk past so that's why we've got all of the blues and the yellows and the whites and the lights and Oh, yes, I just love it. I love it. I love it. So we've got illuminated signs uh, that will draw you in and they will obviously light up at night. And that's exactly what Brighton Pier does. Um, and then I've just done some real fine details on here, some touching up. So we've got some guttering that's now been putting, uh, put in. And then you've also got some details on the roof. It felt like it needed something just to finish the roof off, but not take away from the, the main attraction, which are the, the lights and stuff, especially as we've got the dome here, right? So with the domes in, it felt like it just needed something just to continue on this uh, this theme and this this idea. So cluttered it out with lots of posters, lots of promo material, lots of adverts and stuff. And then we've also got uh, the cafe table down here that's got the sauces and all of the napkins and stuff. And I've just cluttered it out with some extra extra stuff here. And then moving across, we've just got all of the usual stuff again uh, coming along here. And then this behind here is a uh, is like a staff unit. It's where you'd have all of the storage and, and whatever. So this is kind of like a blank space. Felt like you'd want to put some kind of stalls or something in the in the front here. And then you've got your bins over over this way. Now we don't have the luxury of hiding things away. We don't have yards. We don't have backstage areas. We don't have that kind of access. So you tend to find that this stuff is on show. Uh, more so later on in episodes that I'm going to be uh, going to be showing you. It's just really really not well hidden. So this is this is like here, and that's exactly what it's like in real life. It's exactly what you find at Brighton. But you don't mind because you've got lots of other stuff to distract you around. So that's kind of what we're going for here. Then you've just got some vending machines in the front. Again, it's just that idea of trying to capture as much of the money walking past as possible. And then you've got the actual main grand entrance itself. This is what I was talking about with the lettering. Uh, let me just quickly zoom in here. So... There we go. This is what I was talking about with the lettering. Uh, it just makes it look so much better. The images themselves didn't look too good when I had them in. But now I've got the lettering on the front. It kind of now just all makes sense, right? It's still that blue, the pink and the yellows. Uh, it's like the, the actual colours of, <laughs> of, of the pier itself. And then we're going to come over this way. And we've just got some phone boxes. And uh, we've got some machinery down here. So these aren't necessarily meant to be parking tickets. Uh, it could be change machines. Because we've got games machines and stuff that are going on like, uh, along here, right? So this would be like machinery. We don't have a car park. So you're not buying, buying parking tickets as such. But I just wanted to have something represented uh, in this aspect. And then over this way, it's exactly the same as I did on the other side. With the illuminated signs. The cluttering out of all of the posters and stuff. Um, and then just topping off the roof and the uh, lights as well i'm going to show you at night by the way so you can uh, so you can actually see it in its in its full glory i'll do that towards the uh, the end of this bit of the update and then this side again it's monetization it's that grabbing as many people as you possibly can as they're walking past i need to work out what's how it's going to transition down here so this is why this is still a bit jank uh, but it's essentially going to go into the beach right don't know if this car park's going to stay i might actually just keep it as beach but the car park's there for now and then we've just got this, these rides at the front here. And then, of course, you've seen me use these before. These are fishermen's uh, game stalls. They are just so, so, so good. I just couldn't not use them again. So this would be the perfect place for games and, and, and stuff going on. And then we've also got at the front here the bunting. So... If you have a look at uh, this bit here, so the bunting brings this to life. I sort of tried it with two things. The first one I had was uh, the fairy lights, the strip lighting, but it was too overpowering. And I wanted the strip lighting to accent, to accent all of the roofing and everything that we've got going on here. So I replaced it with bunting and I'm so glad I did because the bunting just makes it so, so, so much better. And you wouldn't have them connecting down here, right? Because it's not a maypole. <laughs> it's not it's not how this works, but it's just connected to one central pole and it just is amazing. It looks, looks, looks so good. I'm really, really chuffed. Over here, I've just started to uh, kit out like a, a non-connected uh, in terms of business, but connected in terms of building uh unit food unit here so it's supposed to feel like it's a little bit out of place again i need to see what the transition down here is going to be so i've just put this uh, spit or groin or whatever you want to call it out to sea uh and behind here would be like beach and and, and whatever so i do kind of need to flesh this out a little bit more this this transition is a bit janky again it's exactly the same as the other side i just need to play it out and see what see what happens here uh so then we're going to come in this way 
There we go. And we are greeted with eat it. So this is our food unit. This is the the first like food unit that we've that we've got. I've just done a few minor tweaks in here, you know, like the notice boards and stuff. Moved a couple of just a couple of bits around to make it make a bit more sense, make it a little bit less cluttered. Didn't want to put a member of staff in here. I think I'm probably going to need to, right? Uh, it feels like it's it's needed, so but for now, they're, they're not there. <laughs> they've, they've forgotten that they work there. Uh, and then over here, this is exactly the same principle as before. It's it's the inability to be able to hide things. Again, you see this on Brighton Pier, but it's sort of put aside so you don't mind it so much because it's set aside. You wouldn't necessarily go out of your way to put a fence or anything up. Uh, it is it is what it is. It's just, they're just there. You just sort of accept that, that they just don't have any space and then just a couple of vending machines that are on the side here just to make it uh, make it come to life again and then along here i've then put uh, these lamp posts so they are the vintage lamp posts and they're just put into a cross and then i've just used the sail banners the hydro sail banners uh, just to bring it to life and i like this because it creates like a heart shape so i kind of wanted that to go down the uh, to go down the side of the pier and kept it with the same colors and the same design and the, the same methodology and everything so uh, i wanted that wanted that to be like that Whoops, and then coming down this way, uh, I just wanted a little bit of a cubby hole. So again, as I said in the last update, all of this behind here would be um, small storage areas. So you just bundle all of your stuff in there and, and be done with it. So I just wanted to make this a bit of a monetized area. I didn't want this to be another dumping ground. So I just put a couple of uh, picnic tables in here, a couple of games units, a couple of vending machines, and you are away and you are done with. So then we're going to walk along the pier again so not really much changes along here you don't really need much more other than benches and bins because they are like refuse uh, refuge areas but up here all i've done is i've just started to kit out the ice cream and the milkshake shops i think there's a bit more that i need to do here but i need to see what's going to come towards the end when i start doing this bit over here uh, so for now this is i'm happy with how this is for now uh, but yeah, it's uh, it, it is what it is. I think what I'm going to do, and I don't know whether I'm going to do it here or whether I'm going to do it later on up here. I might put uh, some stalls that stick out of the side here because this is something that does happen at Brighton. Uh, so I might put some stalls that stick out here or some like games units and, and whatever. Don't know. I need to see what space I've got because this might come out a little bit more, uh, etc. So... That's episode two's problem. <laughs> That's future me's problem. Uh, the other side, then I've done it. I've done the same as I did on the other side, but it's just a little bit different. I didn't want it to be symmetrical, so I've just put some uh, video screens up and the, again the ice cream signs and the swing signs and stuff that are all that are all in here. So again, I wanted it to feel different but feel the same uh, at the same time. <laughs> Consistency. That's the uh, uh, that's the word. And then uh, elsewhere, it's not not really a lot to uh, a lot to show you, but this is how it's it's profiled from the road. So it's quite domineering, it's quite dominant, uh, and it does look the part. It looks exactly as I thought it was going to. Right, let's show you at night, shall we? Let's just quickly change the camera to AM. There we go. So this is now how it looks at night, and ah. Oh, it's just the strip lighting. That strip lighting just makes it come to life. It You can just imagine being here on a warm summer's evening or summer's night. And it's just amazing. Like, oh, I, I think it's amazing anyway. You guys might look at it and go, Chacho, this is complete crap. <laughs> but I'm all right with that because this took me ages to do. Uh, so this is what I mean with the signs and uh, whatever that light up. Um, and then underneath here, I have just put some floodlights in. Uh, so there they are, there's the floodlights, and of course I just put all of the cables and stuff in here. So that just lights up the area. This is, again, exactly how they do it at Brighton, so uh, that all makes sense. This area in the middle is actually dark, and it is like that at Brighton as well. Uh, even though this is far wider than Brighton's uh, actually is. But I'm playing with Planco scale here and the fact that we're going to have quite a lot of guests being funneled into our pier up here. So we kind of need to uh, we kind of need to be aware of hitboxes and stuff on, on guests and it's just going to cause a nightmare. But yeah, this is this is what the um, uh, what the whole area looks like down from here. So without the without the people, I just love how it's how it comes to life. You know how you've got a lot of movement, but also static lights and you've got color, you've got vibrancy. Yes, I just love it. It's awesome. It is awesome. Right, so let's talk next episode. What's uh, what's going to be coming? Well, we need to start 
expanding the pier down this way. So as we've already talked about with uh, this principle with the meshing and stuff, we need to start putting some weight onto this uh, onto this pier. So I think what we're going to do is the arcade area, similar to Brighton. You will not be surprised. <laughs> uh, I don't know if this is going to be wider. It might need to be wider by one more. Uh, by one more, I mean one more X this x here so i don't know if it's going to need to be wider by one more uh, i need to decide whether i'm going to do something here or whether it's too soon to do something there um and then we might need to do a restaurant i don't so that's what i think is going to happen but anyway this is where we're ending episode uh, episode one guys it's so 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 good <laughs> forgive the all, all the crap and stuff in the back here <laughs> just don't look there look here in the middle uh guys it's so good to be back thank you so much for having me uh this is going to be a mini series and as i said i'm not going to be spending too much time on this series uh but i do just want to thank you for having me back i really do appreciate it so until episode two please look after yourselves see you later bye bye <laughs>